Here as we go, we're going to continue to make additions and enhancements to our data table. And as we see it take shape, we're going to also get exposure to some of the other features that you have within Excel to improve the viewability and the structure of the data that you're working to display and to save. So uh, what we have so far, we're going to go ahead and add to it further. We're going to add another column out here to the right, column E. Say we have, these are going to be the exam records for the entire history department. And say there are several instructors. So maybe we want to include a column for instructor with a corresponding instructor's name. Okay, and I'm going to type in Barnett as the instructor name. And uh, we're going to show you how to use the autofill to copy an instructor name down because say so far all the records are just for Barnett's students. Okay, we're going to go ahead and again use the autofill. We're going to move the cursor over the bottom right hand corner with that cell selected containing the word Barnett. You see how the cursor changes from a three dimensional plus to a smaller plus. Right when it's in the smaller plus, click the left mouse button, hold it in. Drag or copy it down, release it, and that is a quick and easy way to duplicate data down a column or across numerous cells. Okay, so that was very easy. Now, looking at the title or the heading of this data sheet, History Class Final Exam Results, maybe we want to center that across the columns that we have so far. Because typically, when you put a title at the top of a spreadsheet, You'll put it at the upper left-hand edge, and as you add more columns, you're going to need to center that. Um, I know a lot of folks try to do that manually, but there's an icon and a feature called Merge and Center designed for that purpose, for that very purpose. Now, we see here that our heading is contained solely in column B, row 1, B1, and as I click on that cell, I see that the heading appears here in the formula bar. So that confirms for me. It's not in C, not in D, not in A. It exists in cell B1. So I'm going to click on that cell, hold the left mouse button in, clicking right in the center of it, dragging across the span of columns across which I'd like to center it. Then I'm going to come up here to the alignment group of icons on the home tab of the ribbon, Look for this Merge and Center icon. I'm going to click right on the icon, which then, in effect, merges the cells that I had selected, and it centers the title across that span of cells, which uh, makes it uh, neater to look at, and uh, that's a feature that is extremely handy, Merge and Center. All right, now, say we want to give certain formatting to this data table here. I'm going to click somewhere within my range of data and on the home tab of our ribbon, if I go all the way over to the right to the styles group of icons, there's a set of features there, one of which is format as table. Clicking there opens up a whole palette of different options for formatting my data sheet as a table. And these options are grouped into categories such as light or lighter shades of color, medium, medium shades of color, and dark to darker shades of color. There's a scroll bar to the right of this window, which lets you go down so you can see everything available to you. Now, most of these options here give you alternating shades of color across alternating rows, makes it easier for you to follow visually with your eye a particular student record. All right, medium color gets a little heavier. Some of these have a heavier color shading for the header row. I'm going to go to the light uh, section here. I'm going to choose the first one. Now, what Excel does is it's going to assume for you and put a little border around the area that it believes that you'd like to apply that formatting to. If it's correct, and if your table has headers, which is important to include as well, Make sure that that box is checked. You choose OK. Then you'll see how it's going to go ahead and format your table to give you the features from that selection that you made. If you're not completely content with that, 
you can come back to the table styles area. You can click or even highlight over another option. And you're going to see before you even click on it, it's going to show you what your data sheet is going to look like if you were to apply that particular format. Now I can click the down arrow here which gives me that palette again and as I hover over the different options it shows me how my table is going to appear which is very helpful so before you even commit you can see what you get I'm gonna choose this table style here I'm gonna click on it it then applies it to my table and there I go something else that the table styles do is notice they put these little drop-down arrows across the top of my sheet here and those are auto filters and we're going to talk about auto filter more later on okay but this is how you can format your table you can always go back and change it to suit your preferences